Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today I have an exciting episode for you. This is going to be about the fat channel, the channel strip in Studio One that you might already know from the Studio Live Mixer series. It's an incredibly useful effect rack uh, consisting of a gate, a compressor, an equalizer and a limiter covering most of your mixing needs. So I say let's take a tour of the fat channel together so that you know your way around as it can help you really improve your mixes. So you find the FAT channel when you open up Studio One's browser here in the bottom right. You can also click F3 or press F3 on your keyboard, I mean. And then you go to the Effects tab right here. If you scroll down the Personas uh, list of plugins, then you should find the FAT channel right here. And you can just drag and drop that on any given channel, instrument or audio channel, bus channel, or whatever you can think of, just like so. Now I've already done so, gone ahead and inserted it. And this is what it looks like in its most basic form. As I said, the Fat Channel is a channel strip that you might already know from the Persona Studio Live Series 3 mixes. So it's also cross compatible, I want to mention. And this means that you can take your presets that you've done during a live mixing on a Studio Live console and import those settings directly into Studio One and also vice versa. To send the Studio One Fat Channel XT preset to Studio One Live Series 3 mixers or even the older AI mixers, you can click here inside of the plugin on Export Channel Preset. And this would save the current preset to the Universal Controls user preset folder for use with a connected Studio Live 3 or AI mixer unit. Newly added presets from a connected Studio Live Mixer are automatically added to the Studio One Fat Channel XT preset list that you find right here. So you have total cross compatibility between the Mixer and the DAW world. Uh, Studio One Live AI mixers are actually kind of limited to the default compressor and equalizer types that you find in the Fat Channel XT. But on a Studio Live Series 3 mixer, you could even use the various types of compressors and equalizers that you get in the Fat Channel XT add-ons that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. The Fat Channel XT combines a high pass filter, which is also the high pass filter here on the equalizer, a gate, an expander, I'm gonna talk about the difference in just a second, a compressor, an equalizer, and a limiter, all in one easy to use tool. So these are most likely the mixing effects that you're going to need the most often. In fact, you could do an entire mix probably using nothing but the Fat Channel XT alone as an insert effect. So I'd say let's go through all of the buttons and controls one by one, starting at the very top here with the header. This is the stacked mode. When you click on that, you'll get a vertical display of all of the available modules inside of Fat Channel XT. When this is disengaged, you can click through each of the modules in the signal chain like so. And by the way, you can also reverse the order of compressor and equalizer here by simply clicking on this button. See, now here the compressor comes before the equalizer and here the equalizer comes before the compressor, which can be useful in various applications, for example, de and such. Then we have these individual on and off buttons for each of the modules. So you don't have to use all of them at once. The fat channel can also be useful if you just need one of these components, not all of them at the same time. So now that we discussed all of the header buttons, let's dive in and go through each of the components one by one. First up is the high pass filter slash gate module, which has the purpose of cleaning up your signal before you start processing it further. Click here on the power button to engage both, or if you just need the high pass, that's actually always active, which can act as a low cut to get rid of some of the sub base of your signal for further processing. Turn this knob all the way counterclockwise to the left to just disable the high pass. The gate can be enabled by clicking right here and it has a threshold and a range. These are the two most important parameters to know. The threshold is actually something that you also find on compressors and limiters, which are all related. Um, and in a gate, this sets the point at which the gate lets signal through unaffected. So when it's all the way to the left, that means that any signal that's louder than minus 80, 40 B, which is pretty much any signal you can imagine, is traveling through the gate unaffected. This is sort of like a bypass in that sense. So let's set the threshold a little bit higher here. And then you get the following situation, the signal passes through the gate unaffected as soon as it hits the threshold or goes above it. And as soon as it drops below the threshold, that's when it's being attenuated by the set range. So if you have a signal that's dropping off 
like at first it was able to reach the threshold of minus 22, but now it's dropping off. Could be like in this uh, drum loop would be maybe around here and here. Oops, <laughs> you know, these kind of these kind of passages here, then those would be reduced by the set range could be a very low amount. It could also be very drastic up to minus 84 dB. And this can be useful in various applications. For instance, this would allow me to attenuate the room ambience of a drum recording a bit. Maybe let me demonstrate. This is what it would sound like without a gate active. Like in that case, let me just set the threshold all the way here. And uh, let's go ahead and play this from the start. And now let's, let me just turn up the threshold. Right, it's a little bit abrupt, which is actually the reason there's an expander module that makes this a lot more gradual and not so abrupt. Um, but you get the idea. This can be useful to get rid of a lot of room ambience before you start with further processing. You also see content creators use a gate all the time, like a noise gate. This allows you to, um, you know, just let your voice through unaffected whenever you're speaking. But as soon as you stop speaking, um, the yeah room ambience is drowned out. It can be particularly useful if you're living in a more noisy area. There's also a key filter. The key filter is great because it allows you to open up the gate at a very specific frequency. You can also monitor that at the same time with the key listen button here. And you can also set attack and release, meaning um, when the gate opens or closes is also a lot more gradual then. There's also the possibility to enable a sidechain here by clicking at the top and assigning a different channel. Right now, I only have this channel in this demo song, so it's not really something that I can demonstrate. But then you could open up the gate by yeah, uh, using a different input signal. So whenever a different channel is playing, that's when the gate would open up. Uh, can also be useful potentially in some more creative applications. Okay, so now that we talked about gate, let's move on to the good stuff. Let's talk about compressors, one of my absolute favorite mixing tools. The compressor can be turned on just like the gate by clicking here on the power button. And notice how the miniature view in the track inspector here is expanding as I do that. Uh, the track inspector really allows me to adjust all of the Fat Channel XT controls directly from here. So I could, in theory, just mix without even opening up the plugin channel editor in the first place, which I think is fantastic. Uh, then we have the threshold. Threshold on a compressor works very similar to how you pay your taxes. If you don't earn a certain amount of money every year, at least in Europe, then you don't have to pay taxes on that. But as soon as you pass that certain income threshold, then a certain percentage of that is being taxed. And this is exactly how a compressor attenuates a signal. If your threshold is not met by the signal, then the compressor doesn't do anything. But as soon as the threshold is exceeded, that amount on top of the threshold that goes above it is being uh, attenuated by a ratio that you can set right here. So for example, if this is 2 to 1 and we had a threshold of minus 20, let's say, and then a signal comes in at minus 10, so it's 10 dB above threshold, those 10 dB would be attenuated in a ratio of 2 to 1 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So this would be an easy way to understand how threshold and ratio work. But what's the effect? Well, the effect is that you can make this waveform here, for example, look a lot more even uh, because all of these peaks that we can see right here, right? All of these peaks could be caught by the compressor and attenuated. And once that's done, you can make up for the gain that was lost to raise the average loudness of everything. That's really what a compressor does. It brings the quiet signals and the loud signals closer together in dynamic range. So um, stuff that was quieter before becomes louder in the end after makeup gain and stuff that was really loud before is now a bit quieter. Um, can be useful for all kinds of things. Podcasts, for instance, when somebody moves away from the mic a lot. That's why a compressor really saves me on a daily basis. Then we also have a key filter. This allows you to have the compressor react to just a certain frequency band. Can also be very useful. Uh, for example, you want to attenuate 
some of the sibilance in a voice. This could be perfect for that. And you can use the key listen button here on the right to monitor, to audition what frequency set by the key filter the compressor is currently reacting to. There's two more values that are really important on a compressor and that you'll also find on most of the modules available in Fat Channel XT. That's attack and release. So attack means how long does the compressor wait with the reduction of signal after the threshold has been passed and releases how long does the gain reduction continue after the threshold is not being met anymore. I think that attack and release can be best understood by simply listening to their effect. So let's just go ahead and audition this drum loop together. Let's start by putting the threshold all the way to the right. So there's no compression happening as the signal cannot reach this threshold right now. And let's start bringing down the threshold. Now we can hear these loud drum beats. These drum hits are really being attenuated. And the attack sets how quickly that game reduction starts, this attenuation. If the attack is all the way to the left, it starts immediately, completely killing these transients in the process. Like if I was to just draw this in with a gain envelope so you can visualize this better, it would look kind of like this, right? And really reducing these. Um, but as a consequence, there's also a lot of snappiness being lost in the process. So uh, that's why we probably want to bring up the attack a bit more. Until that snappiness is retained. Usually that's around 20 or 30 milliseconds. We have to be mindful not to set attack too long, because otherwise there's almost no compression happening at all, since the delay is so long after the uh, threshold has been met. With release, we determine how long the reduction is going on for. If it's really short, we have like almost some fluttering in the compressor because it's reacting so fast and that makes it sound a bit distorted. If it's longer, that's smooth and more gradual, but it can also introduce some pumping. It's always a good idea to just trust your eyes with that and your ears. It's nice that you can see the gain reduction here in the meter and usually if it dances along with the beat and it sounds good too, then your compression is pretty much on point. Always AB. This is without the compression. You can hear there's a lot more snappiness. And the compressor is really pushing the room ambience and these overheads. Especially when you bring down the attack a bit more. When in doubt, you can always choose to let Studio One set the attack and release for you. That's what the auto button is for. And if you're striving to get a bit more of a soft compression, you can press this button. In that case, the ratio is not a static amount, but it increases the more the threshold is being passed. So in a way, this is similar to how we used the expander button in the gate earlier. There's also many, many amazing emulations to choose from. Fat Channel XT does come with a tube comp and the FET, a very famous emulation. Um, but there's many, many more that you can get. The best deal for that is probably Persona Sphere, which gives you all of Persona software plugins and all of the uh, sound libraries, content and so forth that we've done and going to do in the future. So that's Definitely the best bang for your buck. I mean, you get so many amazing compressors and also equalizer types. This is going to be the only channel strip you'll ever need. With that said, let's move on straight to the equalizer. And my good friend and colleague Joe Gilder has actually done an amazing tutorial covering the Pro EQ. Um, so if you haven't checked that out yet, definitely make sure to give that a like and uh, your full attention. This will also answer most of your questions that you might have about the Fat Channel XT equalizer anyway. In general, you just get uh, multiple bands to control the highs, the lows, the mids of your signal. They can be set in frequency and Q, meaning the width, and can be engaged on a per band basis with these individual power buttons here. Um, very similar to 
a standard equalizer, but there's also a couple of amazing vintage and passive equalizers to choose from. And if you have Persona Sphere or you purchase the Fat Channel Collection extensions, then you get even more. My favorite one is actually the Bax and Dali Q right here. Just sounds fantastic in my opinion. Last but not least, to end the chain, we have a limiter. A limiter is very similar to a compressor, but the major difference being that attack and release are set automatically in this case, very short to you know, catch any of the transients or any of the peaks in time before they can clip your converters. And um, also, it just has an infinite ratio, meaning like a super high ratio, anything that passes the threshold is being, you know, reduced, almost brick walled as hard as possible. But other than that, the limiter works exactly like the compressor. It's a bit more of a surgical tool. It can really help you shape off these transient peaks and um, often is a great end to maximize loudness in a signal chain. With that said, that is Fat Channel XT, an amazingly powerful channel strip you should definitely check out. If you have any other questions about it, definitely also consider the manual. We have an actual context help in Studio One. You can simply press F1 on your keyboard, I believe, and this will open up the Studio One manual exactly on the chapter that you're currently having in focus. So if you have the Fat Channel XT plugin open and you press F1 on your keyboard, it's gonna bring you to the Fat Channel chapter in the manual. Same works with any other Personas plugin and many other features inside of Studio One. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful.